All right, Gary, Eduardo, congratulations, guys. Your hard work has paid off and is now down to the two of you battling out for the title of Forge and Fire champion and that check for 10 grand. And because this competition's all about iconic weapons from South America, we're sticking with that theme. We're giving you four days to build this. The Argentinian Sabre. The Argentinian Sabre was a fierce 19th century weapon used by the cavalry soldiers known as the Argentinian Grenadiers. These mounted warriors used the lightweight single-edged blade to deliver swift and lethal slashes against enemies while the large hilt protected their hands. After their crucial service in the Argentinian War of Independence, the Grenadiers were given the honor of becoming the presidential escort guard. Today, these elite soldiers still protect the president with this powerful saber at their sides. All right, guys, we will see you in four days. Good luck. We'll Let's get this. Dude. My name is Eduardo Sol. I am originally from Mexico. I moved to the U.S. because I was a foreign exchange student during college and met the woman of my dreams. And she got me into blacksmithing and I got hooked on knives. My concern is that pipeback's fine. Here we go. I never knew that existed until today. The biggest challenge is putting in the curve that's a requirement while still keeping the pipe back spine intact. Hell, we've made some serious progress. Forging is going really well. That's good enough, it's close enough, and I am ready for the quench. Woo! The blade is hard, the blade is straight, and I am exhausted. All I need to do now is get started on my hilt. One of the parameters is drilling the piercings in the hilt. There's that disc. These rotary discs are literally exploding as soon as I put them on. The guard is too hard for the rotary discs to cook through. This one line right there took two and a half cutting discs. I am extremely aggravated by this. I want you 50 Dremel discs. This is supposed to be quick and easy. I am burning through my day. I'm falling behind. I hope I'm gonna have enough time. All righty, now to make that pretty. I finally finish the piercings on my guard. I am down to a single rotary disc left, but I'm running out of time. I need to fly through my handle. Hopefully everything's gonna marry up perfectly. That's it. Overall, I'm still on schedule. After I peen this on, and close it, I'm gonna grind this extra steel off so it's a much tighter fit to the handle. It's time to paint the guard and then sharpen my blade. That should be it. It's really coming out great. That is sharp. I'm Gary Graham from Elkmont, Alabama. 12 days after I turned 18, I enlisted in the Army flying UH-60 Blackhawks started making my first blade after I got home from deployment and it continued to grow to a small business now. I forged the blade out, got the length I one out of it, got it forged to shape, drawing it out with my dies and verifying that everything's nice and even. It's looking good. It's time to go and sharpen the blade. So I'm at the point now I can go out and do some testing with my blade. Whoops. Missed part of it. I bent my blade. I come out with a blade looking like a boomerang. Damn. I only got one more day to get it done. There's no time to waste. I've got to get working on a new blade immediately and make this one work. We should have the process down pat now. We're good on parameters. It's been a hell of a day, but at the end, I've got a quench blade. This blade looks a lot better than the blade that didn't work out so great. It's time for me to work on my handle and my hilt. I grab a piece of sheet metal, cut out the shape that I want, and then I start uh, shaping it in the swage block. Now I'm gonna cut these piercings into my hilt. My plan to put this handle together to secure it properly is I wanna notch out my tang, weld in a machine bolt with its spacer so I can tighten it all up. And the last thing I need to do is sharpen it and assemble the sword. That's it for round three. It's in the judge's hands now. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. Well, it's time to find out just how lethal your weapons are. I'm gonna take your weapons and deliver some thrusts and slashes on this pig carcass. Gary, you up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. Since I've already warped one blade during testing at home, I'm nervous as a cat on a hot tin roof. I don't want my blade to crack. I don't want it to warp and I don't want it to break.
All right, Gary, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, most of the weight is right in the very tip of this blade. But the saving grace for that is that you have a nice handle right there where I can grab onto it. I can marry my hand. It's a void, and I've got full control with this weapon. As you can see, those were very deep cuts. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Eduardo, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm excited. Let's go. Let's do this. I know my edge is fantastic. It can take a beating. It's a killer blade. I can't wait to see what it can do. Gentlemen, I think we have a problem here. That's a very small handle. My hand barely fits in there, and when I'm swinging, there is just no retention or stop right here, especially in the slashes. For thrusting it with the forward weight, all that is on my wrist. What do you think? Oh, I see what you're saying. I can swing it down, swing but I can't it. pull yeah. it back up because I don't have the leverage. Yeah, I'm looking at my fingers double up. The problem is, is there's no space in there. If it does cut loose, that's breaking my hand. Is there any way to adjust and make it fair? The problem with that is I can hold back to make it work, but now I'm holding back, and that's not an even test anymore. OK, you guys all agree that the blade's not safe to wield? Yes. yes. Okay. Eduardo, we absolutely hate to see a competition end like this. But when wielding an edged weapon, safety is always of the utmost importance. Due to the small handle you've presented and the lack of retention that it offers, the judges have issued a vote of no confidence. They can't safely test your weapon. So unfortunately, the time in this competition has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the fourth floor. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks. Thank you, though, Eduardo. I'm crushed. I'm disappointed. I worked really hard for it not to get tested. It fit my hand perfectly. Every step of this competition was a learning experience, and I really think I'm leaving a better smith. Gary, you are today's Forge and Fire champion. You got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It feels great to be a Forge and Fire champion. What are you going to do with the 10 grand? You have plans? Uh, no, I'm sure my wife does. <laughs> I just want to save this for a while. There's a lot of work to get here. It's been fun. I've met a lot of great people, and I've enjoyed it.